Hello everyone, thanks for requesting me. We're back at it again with Disco Elysium, and we're gonna go to bed. Night night. The sheets feel at once coarse and clammy against your skin. The bed sags beneath your weight as you stretch out and finally close your eyes. Hi Raven Moon. Nuzzle nuzzle nuzzle. And then sleep doesn't come. Ah shit. And then sleep doesn't come. But I want to sleep. Obviously. You're in bed with your eyes closed. But it's not happening. Why? Maybe it's the bed's fault. Roll over to the other side. It's a little better. Colors, scenes, and half-formed phrases still litter your mind. Part of you is still trying to solve the case, isn't it? Who killed him? Who? Something to do with. What was it that the lieutenant said? Union? And it's gone again. Your thoughts lost between the slowing brain waves. Who killed him? Who? Something to do with. Ah, oh, damn it. No more thoughts. Fall asleep now. Your breathing steadies. A great silence washes over you until your eyelids twitch in your sleep and images. Images start forming. The goose is loose. And by goose, I mean me. This way. Disco ball. Is that me? Do you remember the scent of your childhood? I was born in a hospital where usually people go to die. You're not kidding anyone, Harry. You don't remember shit. Tell me. Do you remember your wife's hand? your face you said who do you remember the warmth of her thighs between her legs and in her mouth i le i was left that's right funky baby and you just stood there one hand on the bottle and the other on your dick watching her go let it all be dragged away from you. Tell me, where are your friends? Human beings have friends, Harry boy. Where the hell are yours? I don't want to come back. They were only cramping your descent into the abyss. Now they're gone. Three times gone and never coming back. All of it. You failed. You failed me. You failed Elysium. What is Elysium? Everything. The pile and the Isolus. On the surface. The outer magnetosphere. Burning furious truth. Eight thousand years of written history. You really dropped the ball, Harry. 4.6 billion people. And you failed every single one of them. You really fucked up. Hey, Sleepy, what's up? I've talked to you before. No, Harry. You were just talking to yourself. That's all you ever do. Even in your dreams. And the act is wearing thin. The spots of the disco ball fade around you. You'll be back in those cold snake skins in no time. Sweating up the bed. Stinky boy. <laughs> I can come back from this. You're not coming back from shit. Thrashing around in that high conductivity state of yours. Bumping into things and acting like a clown. Who are you kidding? I wish I could watch Twitch at my stupid fucking job, but it's like, I work in healthcare, so it's like a HIPAA violation. Even though everybody's on their damn phone anyways. Why not me? Why not- why not Velvet be on her phone, hmm? Why everybody else be on their phone? I live in fear of getting in trouble with being on my phone, so... I'm trying to solve- trying to solve this case. You're trying to what? 
I can't hear you. <gasps> this is just a word dream now. Jumbled up garbage. The pictures are gone. The bed rises to meet you. A thin, sleep-like state. More class than velvet. I'm velvet. Grinding in your head. Ha. <laughs> Me. So something is wrong. Sleep shouldn't be this bad. This dry. This unnourishing. There's something wrong with your thoughts. Some kind of new type of hangover. God, there's another type? Oh yes, party boy. And it's worse than the one before. Just think of the shit you saw. Here it comes too. So soon already. A silent alarm goes off in your head. Like clockwork. Barely let you sleep at all. Time to get those clothes on, Harry. Yeah, I think we should go back to like everybody just doing what they wanted. Like, you know, artists can make art. Potters can make pottery. People who like to raise sheep will raise sheep. Time to go to work in the shit factory. Healed health plus two. I'm awake. And slept in our clothes. We don't have any jammies. Good going, buddy. Oh my god, what the hell was that? Oh, just a dream. You have ones like that all the time. You feel even worse this morning than you did last night. What the hell's going on with me? You mean, why are you so tired? Too tired and down to even think? It is worrying, isn't it? You can't be a detective like this. Detectives need to be able to think. Why is this happening? It's just that your heart has finally pumped all the speed out of your system, Buster. Time to get some more. I gotta get some drugs. Don't do that. Stay strong. The hangover will wear off. You don't need to keep doing this to yourself. No, I can take this. I'm not going to go looking for speed. Are you sure? Ready to live as this pathetic shell of yourself for days? Basically, a week. Let's be honest, two weeks. Maybe three. You won't make it. Half the town will be dead by then. You will be fired. That's a lie. I can do this without the speed. Half of the town won't be dead. Opt out. Suit yourself, slow, sad shell man. See how you do without your spark. Listen, man, I don't have any money. That's not true, but I need this money for tomorrow's, like, oh, bottle. Give me that. For tomorrow's rent. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face. What's the button I'm looking There it is, okay. Kim! Yeah, like, that's what the Vikings would do. The Vikings just did whatever they wanted. I could have a bunch of cats, and the Vikings would be like, oh yeah, that's cool. Is, which one's Kim's room? This one? Yeah, like a blacksmith. The door is closed. Knock. Still no answer. Try the handle. This door can only be opened with a key or from the inside. Knock again harder. Still nothing. Wah! Hi, Harris. Kim! Kim, where are you? I'm all alone. Kim? Oh my god, Kim has left me to my devices. I'm all by myself. What am I gonna do? Whoa, look at all these people. Kim! Kim, there you are! Kim! I was scared! Kim! You wanna talk? What's up? Morning. He gives you a quick nod. I've got some good news. I took care of the buddy. 
The thought of him decomposing in my MC wouldn't let me sleep. Good, thanks. I'm just glad he's gone. We have other matters to attend to. The lieutenant is downplaying his contribution. He got up before sunrise to get this done. And now, he's quite pleased with himself for taking care of the gruesome business. The Union Master oh. finally turned up. And they look rowdy. We need to talk to them. Sorry. Taking care of the gruesome business so efficiently. Good job, Kim. Okay. What do you mean, rowdy? I mean, ungovernable. Martinez isn't exactly enthusiastic about the RCA being here. They prefer to be policed by the Union. These men here. Men who drink beer for breakfast. There's talk of an armed wing of the Union called the Hardy Boys, who are responsible for state policing. I think it's them. Why do we need to talk to them? Everything points to the Duck Workers Union. The belt used for hanging him. The circumstances in Martinez. My preliminary information. Which may, of course, all be wrong. But we still need to talk to them. And it won't be easy. Are these the men Gart, Garte, Gart told us about yesterday? I completely forgot. Sorry, I had a rough night's sleep. It's them by the looks of it. Loud and nasty, just like the manager said. Bella, shut the fuck up. Come here. Come here, Bella. If you're gonna yell, at least, like, come see me. She's just yelling. Yeah, work was... Okay. My last phone call of the day, I was foolish. So, like, there was five minutes left, and I was like, I can... I can do another phone call. Foolish! Foolish! Um, and, like, there was this lady, and, like, she didn't even let me get through my greeting... The Kuno. The fucking Kuno's here. Oh, my little guys are messed up. Gotta get my little guys back to where they're supposed to be. Get down there. Whoop. Not that, that far down. It's too far down. No, my little guys. There. Yeah, but like they, the thing is, like I didn't want them because like the last time I did that, they were like, "Hey, we seem to even after call work for too long," and I was like, "Yeah, it's because it's the end of my shift." So today I was like, "I'm going to be a good noodle and take the call," but thankfully I only got one done like one minute past my time, so it was not a big deal. So one new thread less to worry about, and one big problem to replace it. There are so many of them. Maybe we should call in reinforcements. That would just escalate tensions. No captain would sign off on it. Solving one murder isn't worth a conflict between the RCM and the Debarders Union. In fact, even the death of two detectives might not warrant an all-out war. So let's keep a cool head, okay? Let's roll. One more thing before we do. We don't have to talk to them immediately. We can walk right past them, continue with our business. Okay. Good. A power move. Purposefully concentrate on something else first. Okay. But aren't you curious to know what they have to say about the murder? Yes, I'm curious. They're in no hurry to leave. They think they own the place. Anyway, I leave that choice to you. Whatever you decide is fine by me. Let's go, Kim. Let's walk right past them. Aren't you the gardener? The woman says to the crowd in the mess hall before turning to you. You seem a little different today. Less hospitable. You are far from home, lieutenants. This isn't a district known for its love of self-proclaimed militiamen. You're right, lieutenant. She did seem friendlier sitting on that corner. Not a muscle moves in her face, but her eyes trace yours, stern and perceptive. You are looking for Titus Hardy, who you think has information on a murder the RCM is investigating. You want to interview him. That's Titus. Talk to him, but know this. I'll be keeping an eye on you. No strong arming, <laughs> nothing official. The district of Martinez does not recognize your authority to make arrests. They could recognize a gun. Gamer fuel, that's right. do 
Okay. It doesn't matter if you recognize our authority. We will make an arrest if we have to. She says nothing. Her glare speaks for her. Could this be the Miss Beaufort that Easy Leo mentioned? The one Mr. Everett sent to law school? Are you Lizzie Elizabeth Miss Beaufort? I suggest not wasting time on trivial pleasantries and focusing on why you are actually here. Titus Hardy. She points to the tall man by the table. Even though she has excellent control over herself, something moves behind her eyes, in the way she stands, in her face. You caught her off guard. Push her some more. Easy. Leo told me about you. He likes to talk a lot. You are not here to chat up the legal counsel. You are here to question these men. Okay. You set the pace and the topic of these conversations here. Establish that. A man like Easy Leo could have said anything. Do not be restrained, sire. He said you're the union fixer. You fix things. I am a legal counsel. Don't make this personal. A very minor victory. Why are you so aggressive? Aggressive? You make your living enforcing violence. These people are just dock workers. Just dock workers? Do dock workers spy on the police? We let you off easy, miss. Don't think it will happen again. Listen, you moral intern lackeys. You're a mob enforcing the unlawful privatization of Revishal. Twenty fat men in the Occident are stealing it all. And you're their bodyguard. Fuck yeah. The tall, broad-shouldered man takes a sip of his beer. So ask what you came to ask, or get back to your commanders. The world needs a financial buffer zone. You need to get emotional. No one is emotional here. Do your job. Ask your questions, then lead. What if I want to talk to you, not Titus? What you want is of no significance, officer. Don't test your authority. In Martinez, you are no one. I saw what you were thinking. You want to say, what are you going to do to me? Don't. Just because it's in your head doesn't mean you have to say it. You will not lose out on anything good by not saying it. Then I should talk to Titus then. Or not. Peace. Have fun lurking hairs. Ugh, I know, I'm so excited for Saturday, though I have plans. I'm gonna stream and then um my friends are having a little party, so I'm gonna go to that. Kuno's still here. Inconspicuous pile of the roofing material, Etonite. Because there's a ah! secret door hidden behind the panels of Etonite. That's why they're too orderly. Pull the panels aside. There it is. You see a shabby little door. What is this, Dan? A tool shed? Let's investigate. Nice. I hate making resumes. I hate job searching. That's why I'm so reluctant to quit my job. Aside from like money stuff, though. But like, you know. An empty tube of magnilosum, a magnesium supplement. A silver plate with traces of bone yellow powder. Be still, my beating heart. It's amphetamine. Sweet amphetamine. Haha, <laughs> I take that. The lieutenant isn't studying the powder in the mirror. He's studying you. There's a good, vague way to ask where he stands on drug use. Professionally, I mean. Someone has taken narcotics here. Perhaps the police should interfere? Perhaps not. This is below our pay grade, detective. However... He points to the ladder in the corner. See that ladder there? It's probably another way into the industrial harbor, no? The secret path the local kids use.
40 cents, baby. The poster says get out of the way or get fucked up. A cured pig's head. It looks mummified. We've already been in the harbor. We don't need to be here. Oh yeah, I want to talk to that lady in the bookstore. So remember yesterday, or well, yesterday in the game, we like knocked on the furnace down here and the lady was like, yeah, I'll like open up something. So, so let's see what we got. Do I not have my flashlight equipped? No, I have my little bag equip equipped. Okay. Dark ass, fucky ass. Is that the Grim Reaper? Oh, is this where it was coming from? I don't think I've been up here. Shoes melting in a puddle of snow. Candy dispenser has been repurposed to, con to contain thousands of dice. The tray is full of dice. Colorful polyhedral dice. Hundreds of them. Hi, are you the person who... Hello. I'm Nia. A bird-like woman sits on the throne of tools, with an emerald light shining through her hair. Did you try knocking on my window? I must have missed you. I've been listening to my media. She taps on her headphones. So what kind of die are you looking for? Could this be the malicious entity? Perhaps it's wise to go along with this masquerade for now. She's got a direct view to the backyard. You should interrogate her about the lynching. Hold on, what do you mean by Milius? Yes, a Millie is like a call-in station. You need a two-way radio to access one. That's why I have these. She pats on the headphones on the table. Mostly. They just teach you to swear in different languages. But some of the stations can be quite interesting. I was so absorbed. I must have missed you knocking. You must have me confused with someone else. I haven't knocked on your window. Then how did you get inside? By the south entrance? You know what? It doesn't even matter. What matters is that you're finally here. Let's talk dice. Did you have something specific in mind? Why are you asking me about dice? I'm a novelty dice maker. Tell me the name of your role-playing system and I'll make the die you need. That's why you're here, yes? Role-playing games? You know the one made by Fortress Accident. Does that count? I'm not interested in buying dice right now. I'm a police officer and I need to ask some questions. Of course, I can see that. I just thought you were a police officer looking for dice. How else can I help you then? No falsehoods are present. She's a novelty dice maker and doesn't have anything to hide. Ask what you need. What do you know about the man who was lynched behind the whirling in rags? Nothing really. I didn't know him. 
Who cares about a dead body? We might be dealing with a malignant entity here. The lieutenant looks at his notebook, then the woman under the large window. Your window looks directly onto the courtyard. You're saying you didn't see or hear anything unusual last Sunday evening? I'm sorry, detective, but as you know, I usually have my headphones on when I'm working. It shuts out most of the daily ruckus behind my window. What do you mean by the daily ruckus? Well, there's always something going on in the whirling's backyard. She stops to try and come up with an example. During daytime, there are usually those kids. And lately, I've been seeing a lot of drunk workers hanging about. Must be because of the strike. She's heard of the murder, but did not see it, sire. But I never saw anyone during that fateful Sunday night, I'm afraid. And you never took your eye off the window work to look out the window? I might have, but in this case, all I would have seen is my own reflection staring back from the darkness. It's light here, but dark in the yard at night. It's really hard to make anything out in the yard when it's dark outside. Besides, I rarely get up to look out the window when I'm in the zone. Do you often work Sunday nights? It's an odd profession, making dice for people, but I like it. And I prefer doing this to sitting at home. I see. Thank you for your answers. She nods. Anything else, officer? How did you come become a dice maker? How did I become one? It was a business decision. I was a regular jeweler at first, but that's an unfocused field with too much competition. Some of my friends were role players. They asked me to make some polyhedral dice out of cobalt. That was my first order. I grew it from there. Do you like role-playing games yourself? Not especially. I like working with rare materials and a steady pay. And role-players as customers? They're nice people. Some of those nice people have big bucks to spend on novelty items. She's thankful for the security they provide her. Hey, where are we anyways? What is this room? Look around the room. We're inside the chimney of an old central furnace. It's strange, I know. She looks up at the ruddy bricks that make up the walls. Even though they've been repainted, there are still signs of coal black soot here and there. But when I arrived here, all the other rooms were taken, so I had to build myself a makeshift home. Besides, I don't really have to pay any rent here, so that's a plus. You're squatting. <laughs> Frisance was right. There's an entity living in the chimney. You should ask her about the curse. Is that roller coaster that you're into? Creative. The lieutenant looks around the spacious room, its ceiling fading into the shadows above. I heard this place is cursed. Do you know about that people call it the doomed commercial area? I've heard the stories, but I don't think those stories are true. She nods as the wind howls from the furnace shaft above. Plaisance is the one who sent me. She's convinced that this place is swarming with malicious ent energies. Plaisance, the bookshop lady? I've heard that her business is doing rather well. Have the energies spared her somehow? Actually, the bookstore isn't doing that well. There are hardly any customers and she has to exploit her own daughter to keep the company going. Oh, right. But it's not just the bookstore that's still up and running. What about the whirling in racks? Some people say it's part of the building complex. Nice. You're from the Midwest too, right? <laughs> no, the whirling isn't doing well either. Its waitress just took off and customers are having trouble paying bills. And then there's me. She sighs, looking at her messy work table. All kinds of tools lie there, scattered from knives to carving files to wire cutters. I've been here for 14 years, selling novelty dice to role-playing enthusiasts. Not exactly a million real business idea, yet somehow I've survived despite the talk of malicious energies. Strange, isn't it? Maybe it's just because she's so talented that she's been able to rule the curse. Plaisance thinks it's because you're the source of it, a malignant entity. Malignant entity? What 
doesn't that even mean? <laughs> Some kind of sorceress? What about you, officer? Do you think I'm the malignant entity? No. Time has come to face the source. Fear not, for the forces of the universe are supporting you in this psychic quest. I'm starting to see that there is no curse, only business decisions and natural mar market fluctuations. Exactly. Truth is always so disappointingly mundane and boring. But I'm glad we got this sorted out. Anything else I can help you with today? That's all she has to say on the subject. She's been thorough and truthful, as far as we can see. Do you know what happened to the other tenants? Everyone else is gone. More or less. Are you interested in anyone specific? There used to be a hair salon here, right? Yes. I think it was called Androgynous Orlando or something similar. They weren't a big hit around here. Turns out that working class men don't like genderless haircuts. They're scared of that word. <laughs> A bit of experimenting every now and then isn't bad. I guess I'm a simple man. I don't really have opinions on hairstyles. Me neither. I just wanted off my face. What happened to the gym? It wasn't merely a gym. It was at the Meetups Boxing Club. A community project created to steer at-risk youth away from drugs and crime. Maybe that's what Kuno needs. A community-centric boxing club. Hmm. Kuno. Kuno. He's a little ginger gremlin who likes to defile dead bodies. Oh yes, you mean the kid with the sailor's mouth. Yes, I've heard him yelling profanities in the backyard. She looks out of the window. It's oddly quiet there at the moment. I think it would take more than a gym to help that kid. And who is Art Timotep? A kind man, from Rems. I heard he had some trouble with the law when he was younger. And that's why he wanted to start the gym, as his way of giving back. Judging from the kids I've met so far, it didn't really work, did it? It didn't. If anything, it made the youth situation in Martinez even worse. At some point, someone started a rumor that the punching bag downstairs was full of amphetamines. Eventually, the coalition took away the funding and the club went bankrupt. This was a few years ago. It's gotten much more peaceful around the plaza ever since. What's up with the broken windows? Oh, this one's a mess. There used to be a company that promised to repair windows 24 hours a day. What could go wrong with this one, right? Turns out, the business was actually set up as a front for an illicit group that was producing snuff medias. Who would have guessed? And they never cleaned up the debris either. Now it's just littering the hallway and I have no idea how to get rid of it on my own. Cool, very cool about the debris, but what's a snuff milieu? It's a sub Rosa radio station that broadcasts real murders with real victims. Some people pay good money to get off on it. Nothing changes in her tone as she says that. As if it's just another piece of information to lay out for the world. Don't worry, the ICP has a separate division that deals exclusively with unlicensed sub -roses. This isn't our problem. Good luck with that. It's not easy catching those perpetrators. I wonder what, like, her personality would be like if you fed her stuff like, I don't know, like, honey. Or milk. Or something. No more oil. No more blood. <laughs> have, have some, like, orange juice, girl. <laughs> Someone here makes stuffed animals? I saw mounts lying around. You mean Mr. Fabron, the taxidermist? No, he mostly just did drugs. Anything else? I found creepy mannequins. There used to be a fashion atelier here, but I have forgotten the head designer's name. They were doing well for a couple of years, until the insect rights activists came. Insect rights activists? What in the name of- Mm-hmm. The atelier produced a certain collection that used chitin among the materials. Apparently chitin is made in the Occident, where it's extracted from beetle wings. And you know how all kinds of political movements are big in the Occident. The activists shut down the biggest chitin supplier, which of course caused the price to skyrocket. And, naturally, all the most fashionable tastemakers refused to be seen in chitin from then on. The atelier went bankrupt before they could finish the collection. 
But insects don't have any brains or feelings. Actually, insects do have brains. But yes, I understand what you're saying. I think the protesters took it a little too far. As she shifts around, you notice several dead flies on the windowsill in front of her. Legs up. They're not moving. Anything else? What's with the rotor blades and skis? They were made by a company called Slipstream. After they pivoted from making rotor blades to skis, their chief executive took off on a vacation with all their money. Oh. Honestly, I think it's quite funny. I think he's still sending out holiday transmissions from Tulula or Tiumotiri or Hashkor or wherever he is. Interesting. What do these transmissions say? The usual, I imagine. But he's been thinking up all kinds of new business plans and can't wait to get started on them just as soon as he returns. Her smile widens before she sees Lieutenant's face behind you. Men like that are a curse. Lieutenant is stern. Sure, but Slipstream is history now. All their remaining assets got seized by the bailiffs in 47. I have no idea why those skis and blades are still lying around in the house. Not much use now, I guess. I found a strange machine. Fortress Accident, the radio game studio. She closes her eyes as some remnant of a memory lights up her face. She liked them. They were an interesting bunch. We talked about role-playing systems every now and then. Once, I even saw two of them get into fisticuffs over Wiro. That's understandable. Fantasies are serious things. The mind is the drawing board of history. They certainly took their work very seriously, even if they seem to be chronically liberal with their schedules. What do you mean liberal? What happened? The usual. They ran out of money and couldn't get the project done on time. What went wrong? Well, I did hear them talking at times. She looks at the hallway as if she can still hear them chit-chat behind her curtains on a cigarette break. They seem to believe they were historical individuals on some grand quest. She sounds almost mocking when she says that. From what I've seen so far, the project did look quite impressive. Yes, but when the money started to run out, they just began to complain a lot about capitalism. You know, how the markets are rigged to keep out new businesses and so on. In the end, they just didn't get it done. They didn't have enough willpower to produce something truly historic. And to show up to work on time. She's right. Showing up to work on time is important. That's too bad. I would have supported them. The project looked great. Not the wisest decision. You would have lost all your savings. She tosses a pair of dice on the table. One of them stops near the edge of the metallic disc. I like it. Sometimes it's like really like a lot, like there's like a lot going on and like I can only play for like an hour depending on like the day because like it's it can be really dense, but I, I'm enjoying it. The result is one on a 20 sided die. The dice is black and filled with little silvery flakes like snowfall. Anything else? There was a terrifying taxidermied bear in the cellar. Oh boy, the fabled Reva show I see tea. You're in for a treat here. She smiles and leans closer, hands on her knees like a stand-up comedian ready to tell a story. The place was owned by two guys who had some rather innovative ideas about marketing. The bear was one of them. Now ask me about their other ideas. Indeed. What were the other ideas? All right, what were the other ideas? There was really just one. And it involved picking out the prettiest girls in the neighborhood and paying them 20 cents per hour to man the booth. And by man the booth, I mean slump behind the counter with a face that could maim you if you ever dared to disturb their bored magazine browsing. She leans back, disapproving. Fritta does the same thing. I know a girl just like that. She works in Fritte as a cashier and she's not particularly friendly. Employing silky teenage girls is a widespread practice, yes. Unfortunately, they always come in packs. I'm talking about acne-ridden girlfriends and grill-like boyfriends loitering near the shop. At least that's what happened with Ravishow Ice City. And they already had the bear. 
She closes her eyes as if remembering something painful. What about the bear? The bear. She repeats, pressing her thumbs into her temples like trying to suppress a headache. It didn't work out. Of course not. The bear was terrifying. No one wants ice cream guarded by a hostile apex predator. To make matters worse, the fridge didn't work too well either, and half the ice cream came out malformed and partially melted. Eventually, Ravishel Ice City lost the price war to its rival, Glass A 5000. Glass A 5000 sold caramel sundaes for only 5 cents a piece, out of regular fridges. Nod solemnly, it's the market doing its job. Maybe. Because the taxidermist who made the bear definitely wasn't doing his job, I mean. How come? He said that the bear was his vision beast. He said he met his vision beast while high on desiccants. Called it Megatherian. Sounds cool. Megatherian? Megatherian. A mega wild beast. What's a mega wild beast? It's an imaginary beast that guides you through life by telling you to do more drugs, mostly. Ah. The horrific necktie tightens around your neck, strangely excited. But it doesn't feel particularly fun this time around. Grab your necktie and mumble, not now, you beast. What? Do you ever feel like your vision beast is trying to blackmail the fun out of you? No, officer. I don't have a vision beast. Normal people don't have vision beasts. Only drug-addled madmen like the taxidermist do. What about a horrific neckties? Do people have horrific neckties? Neckties? I guess they do sometimes, officer. But I don't understand how it's relevant to our discussion. Anyway, now you know the story of the fallen ice cream empire. She seems almost sad, finishing the story. Some dust beams swirl in the morning light. Her eyes follow it idly. Anything else? Another failed business, perhaps? I've been here for a long time. I found the building's intercom, but it's not working. Oh, right. I hope you didn't try to ring me. I think none of those doorbells work, including mine. I'm still in the middle of connecting the wires. Sorry about the confusion. So you're telling me you have a doorbell there? Which one? The one with an empty name card. It's the last one in the list. As I said, it's quite useless right now. It doesn't work yet. I have a few more questions about the building. Sure, I'm listening. Actually, wait, I have more questions about the intercom. I'm pretty sure it still doesn't work. Okay. Sure, I'm listening. Actually, I had other questions. Good. I hope it clarified things a bit. What else? Thank you. Yes? Nothing. Hey girl, we figured it out. You're alive and well. Don't keep me waiting now. What's in there? In that dark sarcophagus. The dark sarcophagus paused dramatically. Yes, yes. How was it? Tell her how ghastly it was. You know it's what she wants to hear. It was a charnel house of failed business enterprises leeching life energy from this bookstore. I knew it. Oh, such horrors that have been thrust upon us. She shakes her head. But what else did you find? Did anything survive? No, of course not. Have you located the entity? I talked to the entity you told me about. Her name is Nia, and she's a novelty dice maker. A novelty dice maker? Well, spit it out. Why does she need the dice? For some kind of sorcery? Sometimes they use the ankle bones of sheep. No, ma'am. I have felt her aura, and she is not to blame for this curse. I don't understand. If it's not her, then where is the source of the doom? 
How did she explain the curse? Just don't say you don't have any answer yet. The uncertainty is killing her. To hell with it. Perchance you ought to just lie, sire. The source is a taxidermist shop. He became involved in arts darker than taxidermy and brought void spirits down upon this place. Oh, how horrid! I knew something wasn't right about that place. Tell me, did you find a way to break the curse? I'm afraid I can only identify the source, but you'll have to call some other experts to lift the curse. Oh, I see. I guess it's time to visit Boogie Street again. I'm sure that I'll find someone who can help me get rid of the doom that still remains in this house. Things are improving. I can feel it. She nods. Thank you, Oliver. Truly, you've brought a better psycho emanation to this humble bookstore, and that's no small achievement. Skill point, baby. She so badly wants this to be over. She would have believed anything. It will only last a day or two. A week tops. Then her mood will sour and she will feel the curse again. All right, then. All's well that ends well. Farewell for now, book peddler. All right, man, put that thing away. You look like a silly goose. Yeah, I don't think I've ever played a game that's quite like this. Um, hey, there's a guy reading the books. Hey, man, what's up? <laughs> You see a sturdy woman humming to herself. She seems to be browsing books. A good one? Pointed the book. Yes. Hello. She nods, her attention fully focused on reading. Who are you? Me? No one. I'm just a working class woman. She doesn't really want to be disturbed that much. What are you doing? Looking for something to read. Phenomenal. It is. I'm a policeman. I know you are. Good then. Mm -hmm. Do you need the help of a policeman? What with? That's all for the moment. I'll let you read. The woman before you nods and returns to her reading. <laughs> Do you need help with anything? No, we got enough stuff on our plate. It's cool because now it's a different day, so there's like different people in different places. Which is neat. Okay, now we can go back to whirling in rags. Okay, let's go. It's a bowl, they're spitting it, reeking of tobacco. Photos of men in overalls, torting guns, and union placards. You see hawthorn bushes outside. Hmm. This is where you say your bit. A broad-shouldered man points to you at you with a beer can. Wow. Okay, look at him. He's all big and whatever. Detective. We need to talk about the man hanged out back. Oh, this is about him. A real looker, that one. You sure took your time, huh? Waited for him to get real ripe and pretty for you. I don't want the opinion of a guy named Shanky. Oh, he was a real pretty boy. Hanging up there, letting out that pretty boy smell. I can't for the life of me understand why he did it. I mean... I would have just left him up there. You must really like cleaning up other people's shit. What the fuck's wrong with you? You might want to start asking your questions now. It's not going to get better than this. Scan the room. No, no, no. Eyes here. You got business with my boys. You got business with me. Yeah. You fuck with the Hardy boys. You fuck with Titus Hardy. Shouts the scrawny rat faced man, two teeth missing in the front. Relax, Dennis. No one is fucking you yet. 
says the 40-something man from the corner with a plectum hanging from his neck. Yeah, Dennis, calm down. No one's fucking you, you stupid fuck. Let Dennis enjoy his fucking, man. We don't mind. You notice gang tattoos. They must. The man must be either Mesk or some Sarah Mirzian. Yeah, <laughs> you're not even being fucked, Dennis. Easy, fellas. We got company. Let's see what brings the cop around. Too late. You already scanned the room. You got a pretty good picture. Got it. Good. You could take another look at the tracks in the yard on the crime scene. See if they fit this bunch. The man hanged in the backyard. Did you do it? The pretty boy. You guys really love talking about that pretty boy. Funny. But my partner and I have a serious matter to discuss with you. Why is there a container belt around the dead man's neck? Container belt? Like we use in the harbor? Yes, why? Because we took it from the harbor where we work. Then we went out back and used it to hang him. We did this together, all of us, until he was dead. That's why there's a container belt around his neck. Aha, so you just confessed to murder? God damn right. I. No, these seven honest men have equally come forth. They told you what happened? So that you don't waste any more of your time. All seven together. The diluting responsibility. It's an anti-arrest tactic. You murdered him just like that? No remorse? How many people have you sent to the Shays? Ever felt remorse for them? Or send them to reunion to rot. For 20 years. For life. We do what's different. We enforce the law. You just kill people like it's nothing. But you see... A law, lawman, is something people agree upon. And here in Martinez, we agree that this man had to die. You murdered him? No, let's see. Who called the shots that night? Are you deaf? There will be no singling anyone out. You can't arrest a Hardy boy without arresting all Hardy boys. Okay, then let's arrest all of them. Do you think you could do that? Do you think you could arrest them all? We could shoot them. A trick question. Don't let her lead the conversation. I don't have to. One of them was more complicit than the others. That's for the courts in Le Jardin to decide. Not for the officer making an arrest. Which we all know you won't be. What you can do right now is go back to your station and write a report. Whose side are you on? No, no. We'll stay here and discuss what happened that night. When did this hanging incident occur? You don't have to keep answering his questions. The fixer turns to remind Titus. I know, Lizzie. Relax. We killed him last Sunday night. Seemed like a good way to end the week. How long had you known the victim? Known him? We don't associate with scum like that, asshole. Yeah! Who do you think we are? Quiet. He came around about three weeks ago when that Pines cow first sailed into town. Happy. By the Pines Cow, you mean Joyce Messier, the representative for White Pines? The same company you're striking against? No. I mean the Pines Cow. The stupid ass cow they sent in to fuck us over. But you know what? He rubs his chin, pretending to mull it over. Why don't you ask her about the pretty boy? I'm sure she has interesting things to say when you ask her hard enough. That's enough insinuation for today, Titus. Officer, your interview is drawing to an end. Don't waste your last questions. How did you kill him? We hanged him up by his neck until he got real still. Wasn't that obvious, copper? Didn't they teach you anything at the cop school, idiot? You're pretty sure you've had at least two years of cop school and many more of active service. The autopsy showed there were no ligature marks. His hands were not tied. Can you explain that? Um, we... <sighs> Look, I'm not gonna play 20 questions with you, Capo. I'll say it again. We killed him. Hmm. Yeah, 
I knocked him out, came up behind him and clapped him in the back of the head. He went down like a sack of sand. Liar. That's right, lawman. And then we hang the fuck. Make them a bit more uncomfortable first. Then see if it all adds up. Mr. Tats, what did you use to knock the victim out? My fucking elbow copper. Some unboxing boxing a style. He may be lying, but he's good at it. No twitching, no rushing, no uncalled for details. Where did all this action take place? Right fucking here. The fucker started coming to our bar, asking for it. All right, come on, come on. Actually, Damn. They're admirably, surprisingly composed. The entire room. Given how many questions you've lobbed their way. All of them? Maybe one of them is fidgeting, cracking under the pressure. Well, this one. But he's always fidgeting, so don't get your hopes up. Right, I have other questions about the lynching. Like what, copper? Why'd you kill him? Why? Because he was worthless, mercenary scum. And he stepped out alive in my town. So he was a mercenary? That's it? And he stepped out alive. He repeats, his jaw clamped shut like a vice. What kind of mercenary? The kind that shows up when you start a strike. The experienced kind, too. All right. Had Kohoi and Semenine written all over him. ex oranese special forces. Thank you for the hydrate. A live grenade. Right here in our bar. This one has a special gripe with him coming here. I can't prove it, but I know he was sent by the Wild Pines. They hired Merc ship like that. Sorry I've ever strike from here to Samara. Right, but what did he actually do wrong? Wrong? He harassed women, raped one, harassed workers, threatened to kill some as a warning. He wipes spittle from his mouth. From rape, to harassment, to threats of violence. Why the strange de-escalation? He regrets mentioning it. Hopes you didn't notice. He kill us all if we don't open the gates. If we don't let the scabs in. If we don't bend over. And that was before he started coming here. Yeah, he said it was his favorite joint now. He started coming here every night. Drinking, grabbing girls. Grab one of ours mid-karaoke, right there on the stage. He grabbed someone? The lieutenant is trying to make sense of this flood of information. Yeah. This girl's on the mic. A beautiful girl. Young. Gets into the second verse of Love a Lake. The fucker grabs her legs, starts screaming. Show me your cunt! Why don't you show me your cunt? Then, he gets knocked on the head with a wine bottle. Doesn't even fall down. Was this the same girl who was sexually assaulted? Raped, you said? Aren't you fucking listening? My man is talking to you. He took care of it. He got the girl out before anything else could happen. Yeah, me and Eugene got her out. Aren't you fucking listening? He repeats like a parrot. There's something odd here. Seems like they don't want to talk about that rape Titus mentioned. Why not? This is a serious allegation make them talk about right but who did he rape then this is a very serious allegation no you're not getting the name that's a martin a's matter and i'm not discussing it with you clowns so what are we going to do now conclude the questioning nothing your investigation here is done leave martinez go back to your stations where you belong i think we're going to stick around thanks Something don't add up here, Titus. Lieutenant closes his notebook. I've done this job for long enough to know that people don't just confess to first degree murder. Even if it is a group responsibility, we're going to look into this. Good luck with that. You've heard everything a rent -a cop is gonna hear from us real law officials. You're lucky you didn't get a beaten. Forget about their games. You've mapped out the characters. Reading the footprints in the yard should be easier now. I'm going to take off now. Some kind of superstar. Mm. 
They say the world isn't ready for a rock and roll cop. No one wants to hear the state of monopoly on violence whoop, 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 to be mixed with the celebrity worship. They can claim to know it. It would be dangerous for detectives to rise to the ranks of demigods and have sexual encounters with barely legal cover girls. It would all be too insane, they say. To all this, you say, fuck off and die in a cool voice. You have no idea how good these cops are going to get. They're going to crack 20 cases a day. In the future, cops will be like astrophysicists or prime ministers or prophets. And you're the first one. I have a slow metabolism, Dennis. Oh, there's a girl up there. There are several footprints in the mud, left by work boots. Anywhere from six to twelve pairs have walked here. Get an exact count. Eight pairs of boots have shuffled back and forth in the mud. Where else have we seen a gang of men in work boots? That's right. The hardy boys in the mess hall of whirling and rags. Go over them one by one. One. Standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Number 46. Just like Titus was wearing in his booth, this is the big dick, Titus Hardy, the one with the ball cap on his head. Continue counting. Two, standard work boot, steel reinforced toes, number 44. Either the blonde muscular guy, Glenn, or the young guy with a plectrum around his neck. Three, hobnailed work boot, steel reinforced toes, number 43, the inked banger pack. Four, standard work boot, number 45 or 46. Theo, the old smoker. You think you even see a tiny fleck of cigarette ash inside the print. What else? Five, another standard work boot, reinforced toes, number 44. Same as before, either the musician, Eugene, or the muscle-bound blonde, Glenn. Six, light as air. Same make of boot, but number 41. Small like a rat, shanky. I should have gotten this earlier. Better late than never, detective. The whole world is dark and the tracks burn in it with strange beauty. Count the rest. Seven, the glowing outline of a standard work boot, number 46. The imprints are twice as deep as the others. The weight exceeds 200 kilograms. Fat Angus, carrying something. And the last one? Eight. Another standard work boot, number 44. There's an aberration in the pattern of the sole. The right sole is smoother, more worn. Wow! A missing eighth hardy boy. The right sole is smoother, more worn. I watch enough true crime to know what that means. That means there's a truck driver, probably. Seven sets of tracks, right? The Hardy Boys were here. Eight, actually. That's all? Interesting. Then one of them seems to be missing. Anything else out of the ordinary? Note to self. This would be a good question to ask Titus. Where's the eighth man? A leader like Titus doesn't let one of his guys out of sight easily, especially at a time like this. An aberration. One soul is smoother than the other. Interesting. Let's name it the old soul. I wouldn't be surprised if this was the missing Hardy boy. Wonder who he is. Do you have any ideas, Lieutenant? Someone operating a workbench with a pedal? Yeah! Like a joiner at the harbor. Or maybe a drummer? He regrets it the moment he says it. <laughs> a drummer? That's stupid. A drummer only uses the right foot for the kick drum. You're right. Perhaps it could be a driver. A driver would wear the right shoe before the left. The accelerator isn't right. That's what exactly, actually, yeah, that's what I was thinking. He doesn't seem to hear you, looking south toward the traffic jam instead. The machines are silent. The engines are all turned off. We should keep our eyes open around the traffic jam, see whether anyone strikes out as a potential suspect. 
Seems prudent, no? Yes, prudent. Mm -hmm. Light step number 41, Sue. I'm guessing that's the skinny hearty boy. The one with his front teeth missing. You mean the rat faced one? Yes, well, he did look a bit like a rat. You're right. Do you think those prints belong to him? Probably, yes. I could still be wrong, but I'm probably not. A heavy one. A 200 kilogram imprint. Imprint. 200. This could be the combined weight of two people, one carrying the other who's tied up. Let's say a heavily built worker carrying a similarly built armored man. Maybe it was a fat hardy boy, the one sitting in the middle. He might be right. 200 kilograms of living weight is unlikely. You're right, the fat guy from the booth was carrying the victim. Possibly, yes. How old do you think these tracks are? A week, maybe? Seven days would fit the time frame provided to us by the caller, who reported the hanging. It is not impossible. How do you know? I pulled last week's forecast for Coastal Havashot. Seven days below freezing. The day before, the day of his hanging, was the last one day. Correct again. Sub-zero temperatures would preserve the tracks in a good state. The commotion here could have taken place a week ago. What do you think happened here? What do I think? A mob of people brought something heavy to the tree. One of them was carrying the victim. He shuffled around, especially under the tree. Then, after hoisting him up, they stood in a semicircle facing his direction. At first glance, this appears to be a lynching. Indeed. They all stood in a row here and looked at the tree. So far, so good. Only one thing missing. He looks up from the tracks, face lighting up from the realization. Of course, there were eight tracks, but there are only seven Hardy Boys. Let him have his moment of joy. There's one pair missing from the Union box, the eighth pair. I'm going to say it was our old soul. So the odd soul was present at the lynching, but isn't in the mess hall right now. Yes, I doubt the Hardys are going to tell us who this person is. For now, it's best if we just keep our eyes open. I'm sure our investigation will eventually lead us to the old soul. We've been through all of it. All right. The street sign reads, fuck the police. Pigs go home, the street name is illegible. I got more can- I got more bottles, not cans. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. The tear machines. Your bottles clunk into the machine. Yeah. <sighs> Man. It's been a while since I've been on band camp. Sometimes I still get emails from, like, a little bit of them. Anybody know the Hardy Boys? Hey. My guy. Hola, wandering man. How can I help you? Any idea who killed the hangman? The mercenary, eh? Who could have killed him? That's indeed the question. I even do such a thing. The harbor is a prime area of suspicion, in your opinion. What are, are the dock workers involved in the killing? What a thought. Why would noble workers resort to such a thing? Unless they were pushed, of course. Pushed how? Your dead guy was an enemy combatant. Hold up, what does that mean? He was an agent of the opposition. Yeah, okay. I am the murdering... He's not to lie. Understood. No problem. Okay. I wish the best. I've done that before. Damn it, get, get, okay. Oh, there's new stuff. Is that coins for me? Yeah, 60 cents, baby.
A white tank top. A bold slogan, a human ox covers the truck. An old monument stands in the middle of the traffic island, pointing toward the sea. It looks as if it's being reassembled piece by piece, secured and mounted in the air with the aid of numerous ropes and rods. Who's this? A silver plaque on the statue's pedestal reads, I am Philip III, the squanderer, the greatest of the Philippian kings of Revachol, son of Philip II, the opulent, father of Philip IV, the insane. Not a good track record of mental health in that family. Encyclopedia, let's try it. Even yes. by the standards of the Philippian kings, old sumptuous Philip was known for his profligacy. Well, he blew through the whole national treasury, starting the decline of one of the penultimate century's greatest superpowers, the suzerain of Remishol. His own maladministration foreshadowed the fall of the monarchy during the anti-centennial revolution, an end to his family line and the monarchy on the Insulindian Isola. How did he manage to blow through the entire national treasury? Stories have it that he had his bedroom converted into a treasure chamber where he stored unfathomable wealth. Krugerrands, bars of gold, ornate weaponry, armor, and various chalices. He called it the Sol Aura. It was obscene. There were whispers he slept on a huge pile of gold-dipped feathers like some obese dragon instead of a bed like a normal person uh i listen to a lot of like j-pop and like j-rock i listen to a lot of like video game or like tv show soundtracks uh just a lot of it's a, it's a real mixed bag <laughs> all kinds of junk just whatever catches my attention i guess the man certainly knew how to live A deplorable farce. No wonder everything went to shit. But wait, you haven't even heard about his fabled cocaine addiction. I don't want to know. Philip III's ludicrous bronze likeness looks defiantly up into the sky. Leave. All right. Hmm. That's that grandma. Okay, I'm pretty tuckered out, so I think I'm gonna end here. Work was long today. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, I like the music in here too. It's nice. Okay, let me see here. Nah, it's alright. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. We're gonna raid Art Creates. They're playing Phasmophobia. Yes, thanks for coming. It looks like they're doing a little promo thing right now, but they're going to play Phasmo, I bet, so. All right, gang, see you tomorrow. Thanks for stopping in, I do appreciate it. Bye-bye.